Welcome back to the channel, folks. Appreciate everybody staying in tune with the channel. Before we get into the vlog, I want to give a few shout out to some of my top viewers. Shout out to Indonesia. Shout out to India. Shout out to Malaysia. Shout out to the Philippines. Shout out to the United Kingdom. And shout out to Japan. Shout out to Aaron Simmons, too, man. If you are on Facebook or Instagram and you want to follow that guy, he's into uh, driving them semi trucks. He definitely looking into wanting to start his own authority. So if you got your own situation going on and you would love to want to give some insight and some advice to that young man, hit him up at A-A-R-O-N Simmons on Facebook or on Instagram. But let's get straight into the vlog, man. I'm going to talk about on this particular vlog on how to stay away from disasters when you bearing a line between two properties and it's close up on that eastman. So, let's get straight into it. But first, you already know I got to hit you with that intro, baby. The last of a dime breed. Stars in the ceiling of my coupe. But I started from the bottom, two bedroom pigeon coop. And it was seven of us, so we had to make room. I remember playing the night sleeping on the floor. Yeah. Daddy got a warrant, crackers at the door. Yeah. Mama working double shifts at Burger King. Mama. Hey guys, I'm going to point something out to you right here. I want you to pay attention. You see where the terminal is at? Where at least the handhold and where the line going in up under the sidewalk at? All right, right here in this area is basically uh, the property line between the two props. So anytime you're in a situation like this and you're trying to bear that line, the best thing to do is you want to use your best judgment and just go ahead and get straight onto the customer side, right? So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. You see the line, I'm holding the line. I don't know if y'all can pretty much see it, but you wanna stay within the customer side, man. So what I'm gonna do right here is come up off that corner and come more into their yard and come down instead of staying over here where they painted the line at. The uh, neighboring yard sometimes, you know, just don't agree with you being that close up on their property. And then on top of that, let's look at this. That's another reason. I'm glad I'm even showing you all this. You see that connection point right here? So they got fiber coming through here also, right? So your best bet to want to do is to stay right up on here. You see what I'm saying? You want to stay right up on here and going back into the to their yard because you don't know who laid this line and how they possibly came around through here. They probably came out as wide to over here. You see what I'm saying? So just a little something I wanted to point out to y'all, man. Show you this little bit of advice when you're out here in the field, man. Like I said, anytime it's a situation like this, you see where my trench is at? You see how I went back into the customer yard and stayed away from the actual uh, eastman of the two properties? Went more back into the customer yard. Now I'm gonna show you this for those who been asking, uh, do it really get down to six inches or more? Well, I got my tape measure out for you right there. And as you can see, <clears throat> even if you stump it back down, that's still at least six and a half to seven inches down. All right? And it's not just in one spot. So let me take it somewhere else so you'll see that it's real everywhere you go with me, for, uh, at least. You know what I mean? I ain't got the top part, people. You already know. There you go. See that? Six inches, baby. Take it down somewhere else. We're gonna go all through here. We ain't gonna push, push, press, you know what I mean? Go all through here. Six, seven inches. I don't play, man. I get you down to depth real good. Real good. So, like I said, if your line get cut and I buried it, it wasn't due to my burial. <laughs> Just know. Well, let me point this out to you. Uh, right here, coming off side, coming off of this sidewalk, right? You see how I made that big L and not just went straight to the terminal out of the hole, the pit hole, and just came straight to the terminal from like right here. You see what I'm saying? And just come straight in off of the sidewalk board and come straight in. I angled it. And the reason I did that because uh, this fiber services is possibly new in this neighborhood. So this handhold box gives services up to four people. As you can see, it got four plug and play pieces, right? Right. So understand that it's gonna be three other more lines coming up to this same box. So the, the best way to try to do that, so this custom here may not have it yet. 
what we seen over there could possibly be a copper box for AT&T. So if they decide to want to get the AT&T services or the fiber and they want to run it on the same side right here and somebody got to come back and do the sidewalk board again, they can come straight to the box. And the good thing to do is when you pull up to the property is to open the box and see if there are any other more lines coming out of the box and where is they coming out of. That way you can, you know, decide on where you going, you know, make your trench at coming up to the box. So let's just walk down and show you the, the trench line all the way through. So you see what I'm saying? You see how I got back more into the customer yard, more into they, you see what I'm saying? It ain't even on this side of the house. It's right in front of the bricks as a window. You know, that's what you want to do to avoid if they get the services and they got to come through this same alleyway. You see what I'm saying? So you want to give the next door neighboring person uh, room also if they wanted the services. That way the two people won't get their line. And that's how a lot of lines get caught up, man. I'm going to be honest with you. That's how a lot of lines get caught up. Because it's just... Uh, a quick route it just comes straight down into it instead of making all these you know detour turns to, to try to avoid certain situations but that's just how i love i love to do it because i don't like to get called back by the job four days later and i know i buried it deep enough for you and everything else it's just the next person who got the services went right on top of where i would bury mine at so to avoid that you just want to you know Keep that type of you know scenery out in the yard and the neighboring yard and try to make your best judgment one minute 37 seconds later all right guys i'm gonna point, I'm gonna point something else out to you this is how you can notice like i said that they just put the infrastructure in to this community i don't seen about four five several lines since i've been on this same road all right i'm gonna tell you this right here this line is damaged you see that this line is damaged. So what I'm gonna do, hopefully the customer is home, and what I'm gonna do is ask them if their service is any good still. And most likely it possibly is, but it's probably gonna start shortening out over time. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and drop a whole new line so they don't have that, that problem of that line, you know, deteriorating on them over time. But look at what the tech did. Tech, whoever dropped this line, tech, you did a good job of painting that ground. Look at that. Yes, uh, I'm gonna point something else to you. I just noticed another line over here in this yard. I just did a line down the street, and here it is. Now I'm here doing this one. So that's three lines on this one street, and I can about bet you once everybody else. Uh, get an idea that they can get the fiber services they're going to convert over and get them also so let's go see if the customer home and see if they still got good services yeah later that same evening hey man i just caught this guy at the store say your name man shout out to instagram uh don't do social media but if you need a one wheel hit up ryan uh, herowitz in crescent beach all right. Grand opening for the storefront is November 20th. Okay, okay. We have a huge group ride on the beach. Okay, okay. My man got the one wheel, man. He was just telling me about the one wheel and how fascinating it is. And I was just wanting to get, you know, do a little small interview with him just to see if I can get a little, you know, little trick on it. Let me see if you can do a little trick on it, man. Oh, dude, I'm too old to do that kind of nonsense. Oh, come on I now. Can, can you ain't an 80s, thing. baby. You look like a 90s, baby. Yeah, I, I took the hits in the 90s. Okay. Dude, I'll admit, I don't ride aggressively anymore. Oh, man, that's nice, though, man. I like that thick wheel on there, too, man. That's thing nice. The treaded tire is amazing. You can dig in so deep on it. Yep. All right, Change man. Life, man. All right, my name's that's Gateway, man. Look at me on uh, YouTube at Gateway to Dunn. I'll probably find you. All right. Like I said, I'm, I'm promoting for my buddy's store, so. All right. All right, buddy. All right, fam, that's going to end it for this particular vlog. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned the process of what it takes to avoid other people's lines, crossing other people's lines.
but you already know the slogan. Until next time, stay prayed up, stay blessed, and stay getting to that money. Yeah, yeah. Still a dime breed. Stars in the ceiling of my coop. When I started from the bottom, two bedroom pigeon coop. And it was seven of us, so we had to make room. I remember playing the night, sleeping on the floor. Yeah. Daddy got a warrant, crackers at the door. Yeah. Mama working double shifts at Burger King. Mama.